everybody, it's Tyler here at the Michigan State Championship checking in with team number 67, Hot. Absolutely phenomenal robot this year. Absolutely on fire is hot so far. Hall of Fame, of course, as well, too, as we go through. Take a look at what 67 has to offer this year. A phenomenal uh, intake. I love wide intakes on robots as well, too. But take a look at this monstrous arm and transfer system that they're using as well, too. We talking about that. A couple of cool things they're doing with their drive and a little bit more about their programming coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University has over 25 pre-college camps and learning experiences available from computer science and engineering to inspiring future women engineers, leadership development, and first base camps for first graders to graduating high school seniors. Magna and GM sponsor camp fee scholarships are available. Email ctaylor at kettering.edu for more information. If you're attending championships, come to the Fun and FRC Discord Meetup on Thursday, April 20th from 11 to 11.45 a.m. in Conference Room 360 CNF on the third floor. We'll have games, giveaways, time to socialize, and a chance to meet the Fun and FRC Discord staff. Get a reminder RSVP on the Fun or FRC Discords, and we'll see you at championships. Will, let's talk about your drive. You're doing a couple of cool things in regards to quick changeouts, and I also noticed you got some sweet anodization on your drive as well, too. Talk to me more about it. Yeah, so this year we decided to anodize almost everything on our robot, down to every last piece on our swerve modules. Uh, you can see here in the corners, all of them are anodized with red plates, and we even anodized the wheels. It looks really nice with the black, uh, black tread on them. And we also put cutouts in our frame so that we're able to quick swap our our swerve modules, that's something we ran into last year. We broke swerve module, and we're done. Next match, you can't play. So this year, we put cutouts, and we're able to quick swap them, and they have worked. We've already had to replace a couple bearings, and we've been able to do it quick enough that we can get back to our next match and drive perfectly fine. Our frame is not a perfect square. We are 26 by 28, because if we line up on the balance pad with our 26 side, all three robots, if they were that same length, we would all three be able to fit onto the balancing station perfectly fine. For swerve modules, we're running our SDS swerve modules, the Mark IV eyes, with the L2 gear set. We were thinking about switching to an L3 gear set, but there was they weren't in stock until we discover we decided maybe we can machine some, and at that point it was too late in the season to have to redo all of our autonomouses and reprogram how our drivetrain works. Let's start to go into uh, some of the other aspects of your robot here. Let's start out with the uh, arm and the gripper area. I love this arm that you have so far, Colin. So talk to me about what's gone into it. I'd love to hear about just some of the packaging on this and just how it's been working out for you. Awesome, yeah. So this year we wanted to stay really robust. So we kind of went with the classic pivot at one point and then extend. So um, with that in mind, we went with a sprocket system here with a bike chain. And this has got a 500 to 1 gear ratio over here. Now, up here, this is where it gets kind of cool. This is attached to a 90 degree belt system. So to reduce lash in this, we used a belt instead of be uh, standard bevel gears. And that's really allowed us to keep it super consistent for every single comb placement and ball placement as well. So going into the elbow, we have these really nice 3D printed parts here. And we've been using recently sponsored uh, software to optimize these so I can do really well under stress. You can see super well right here. They have these hole patterns so they can stay really light while also being super sturdy. So if you take a look over here, we have this system uh, if you want to boot up the arm. So basically we have these belts attached such that as the arm rotates and goes out, this will stay perfectly level. So can you uh, extend that? Yep, so that just moves with it. So it's sort of like a simulated four bar and that keeps us able to place really consistently. So um, on this gripper, our initial design was just wheels along the bottom so it could suck in cones. But as we um, passed our first competition in week one, we realized we wanted to have a touch and go um, method. So we added these mechanism wheels here to vector the cones into it and then also out of these star wheels, so it's a very consistent pickup every single time at the human player station. Throughout your uh, iteration process, as you looked at, at this arm on here, how are you keeping like your CG as low as you're able to do? Uh, you know, that arm comes out so far, and there's a decent amount of weight on there, too. Oh, yeah. So um, one of our biggest things is just keeping all of our motors really low, because those take up a lot of weight. So one of our greatest examples of that is down here, we have nested a Neo that powers a thunder hex shaft that goes all the way up here. It's uh, nestled in there, so you can't really see it very well. But it powers a, a shaft that goes up here and then allows this to rip, um, rotate in and out. And we're loading off of the side of the robot, so not from the front. Yeah, obviously very robustly built uh, so far as we go through. 
Uh, and we'll see a little bit more, I think, in regards to position control when we get the programming as well. So I'd love to hear more about that soon. But let's go to Sierra, talk about this awesome intake uh, that your robot is doing, as well as the, uh, how it kind of transfers in uh, onto your robot as well, too. So talk to me more about your intake and what's going on to it, Sierra. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is our second iteration of our intake. Our first one, when we uh, decided to um, build it, we built it with all. We were powering it with all motors with the shafts. We found out we can't actually do that much power on a robot. So um, after our first Milford competition, where we could only intake cubes, uh, we decided to change to this method. Um, we have our two-inch wheels right here with our Mechnum wheels that funnel a cone if we decide to pick it up into the center of our robot. Um, where we can spit it back out into a low goal. We haven't quite got the arm position to pick it up inside our robot yet. Um, we additionally just, we can intake cubes and we can either hold it here or take it all the way in our robot. If we hold it in this space right here, we're able to spit it back out in the low goal. Um, and if we intake it in the robot, we can also use our gripper to place it on any of the three levels. Okay, so we can intake off the floor um, and we get really quick cycle times this way. Instead of having to go all the way to the human player station, we can pick up um, cubes off the floor. And the and rollers that you have in the middle of this, is that used for centering in that transfer area, or how does that work? Um, we use, they're, they're slightly powered to keep our um, cubes and cones in the middle, but um, they, they just transition into our gripper. Uh, we were originally planning on using our hopper to write cones, but we found it wasn't very, um, easy. So now it's just like a passing point into our gripper. Looking at uh, the, the intake that you're doing on there, uh, you know, it re makes me remind myself a little bit of last year's uh, robot that you have as well too. Uh, but looking at the game design, uh, why was it so important for Hot to go with such a wide intake this year as well? Yeah, so our original intake that we had at our Milford competition was very similar to ours last year. Um, the cones aren't as easy to intake obviously but the cubes are much like what we had last year so we based it off of that and then we added um, rollers in different locations in order to intake better um, we decided to go with one instead of two like you guys saw last year mostly because it wasn't worth it to have two intakes and it would make our center balance odd um, additionally we have this one as wide as possible um, in order to just better intake cubes as quickly as possible without having to turn as much. Our swerve drive obviously helps with that. You don't have to turn as far, um, but it just made the most sense for this year. Let's start wrap up this room by talking about some of the awesome programming that's gone into it, Evan. And uh, a couple things I really want to hear about on this is going to be, of course, from your autonomous side. How are you approaching that? And then if you can talk maybe just some about your arm positional control as well, too, that'd be really cool. Yeah, so, okay. yeah, so uh, with uh, autonomous, so we uh, we were trying to at the beginning of the year we were trying to do uh, limelight uh, April tag for the position of control, and we realized like a lot of other teams, uh, the limelights actually sorry, the limelights actually don't uh, update fast enough for you to go fast through the autos, so it wasn't really worth it. You kind of just got jerky movement that didn't really look smooth, and kind of made your autonomous more inaccurate than. So we just decided to go back to kind of wheel odometry and pigeon control. And that seems to have worked really well. You know, we've got a three object auto that seems to, as we're tuning it for this competition, it seems to be working okay. Um, and we've got some kind of cord cover auto that can do two and a half. And so that's just using um, wheel odometry. And then we have path weaver to make all of the paths so that we can smoothly control through the uh, field. Um, uh, with the arm control, so, since it, uh, these uh, these little I don't know these little things right here they block the arm from smoothly coming out um, when it has an object, so we had to make constraints for the arm. So instead of making each uh, smoothly like inverse kinematics for where the arm needs to go to avoid that position, we just have zones. So if the arm is within this zone of the hopper, so that's what we call this zone right here. If it's in there, it has to go to this intermediate position. Um, before it can go out. So if I show, run it real quick. So you see it kind of extends kind of extends up before it comes out so that we can clear even if we have a game object. Um, so then we went on the return, we also have to do something like that so that we don't smack into this panel. Um, and then in, we have a manual control that right, right now you can do a high, mid, or low position. We also have a manual control where you get to 
just manual control everything and put it at any position you want. And so a part of the constraints with the zones was even if you get through manual to a spot that you aren't necessarily supposed to be, it'll still safely return back through the zones that we also don't hit or we don't smack into anything. It'll always safely return to those zones so that we don't break the arm. Um, and then with one thing with the intake is if we run it um, for those that cube stop, we have a beam brake sensor in there that if, if a cube gets in there, it'll just stop the intake. That's how we don't feed it through. And then if we lift it up, there's this position that it'll lift it up, and if we choose to, it'll spit it through in, and you can pick it up with the arm, and it'll extend back out. So. Well, Hot 67, thank you so much for taking time to tell us more about your team and robot. You are looking phenomenal this year, so we wish you best of luck at uh, MSC here, and I can't wait to see you at World Championships as well. Thanks a lot. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University has over 25 pre-college camps and learning experiences available from computer science and engineering to inspiring future women engineers, leadership development, and first base camps for first graders to graduating high school seniors. Magna and GM sponsor camp fee scholarships are available. Email ctaylor at kettering.edu for more information. FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash first updates now. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.